Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, we're continuing on our classroom series. If you remember, I'm teaching a class over at scrollsawvillage.com where I'm teaching how to uh, create a scroll saw portrait pattern using a program called GIMP. So it's going to be a four week class, two lessons each week, and each lesson builds upon itself. Uh, this is lesson two. And we're going to be talking about what makes a good pattern. We're going to be talking about two different things. We're going to be talking about uh, different styles of patterns, and we're also going to talk about uh, uh, what are good resources to use to make patterns. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. Now, the very first thing I would like to kind of talk about is the different types of patterns. Now, I'm just going to kind of break this down into like four or five different kinds of patterns, and uh, these are just kind of real broad brush stroke of categories. Many artists will combine several different kinds of styles uh, to create a nice portrait pattern. The very first one I'm going to talk about is um, kind of a line art. Uh, line art is uh, kind of like a drawing. Uh, you're using the scroll saw to more or less create lines as you would with like a pencil or a pen uh, to create a drawing. A lot of people will use this. Uh, this one works especially well. This is done by Clayton in our forums. And uh, I'd like to also kind of point out that all these patterns that I'm showing you are available over at Scroll Saw Village. So swing by and take a look. But uh, this one is designed by Clayton. It's a caricature of Albert Einstein. And uh, this one uh, works especially well as line art just because it is a caricature. And uh, we usually associate caricatures with line drawings to begin with. But uh, as you can kind of see, there's really not a whole lot of shadows. There's not a, a, lot, a whole lot of depth or anything like that. It's just, it's just lines. And this is what I would consider line art. So uh, it's a, uh, a popular style and uh, it works really well. Uh, the next style is kind of a silhouette style. Uh, the silhouette, obviously, again, it doesn't have a whole lot of depth. In fact, it's just an outline of your subject matter. Of This happens to be a hummingbird. Uh, this, I think this is a trivet pattern designed by our one and only Christina. And, uh, and basically use uh, the outline or the silhouette of the um, subject matter to define um, the detail, I guess. Uh, so there we have silhouette. The next one is uh, very interesting. It's I kind of consider it a, kind of a, a pointillism or an impressionistic style. It kind of reminds me of uh, famous artists like uh, uh, Monet. Uh, you know, sometimes they'll just use like little dabs of paint. It just uh, uh, they just kind of layer it on the on the paint, and uh, when you're standing up close to it, it just looks like little dots. But once you step back you could actually see the picture come together. And this is uh, a perfect example of that. Uh, this is designed by uh, uh, Darren. Uh, I think he goes by the name White Wolf. Uh, let's click in here just so we can really kind of see what we're talking about here. And you can see each one of these little holes will be individually thread and cut. And uh, you'll see a lot of patterns like this. Seems to be a very popular pattern style be able to create some really nice patterns like that. So uh, anyway, that's a pattern from Darren. Uh, the next one is what I would consider like a deep shadowed one. This is a portrait of, well, let's see, who is a portrait? Chief White Shield. Chief White Shield, I think he's based out of South Dakota. This was based on a picture taken in 1908. Uh, this was designed by me. Let me. This is what I would consider um, uh, heavily shadowed. Uh, the shadows and the shape of the shadows is really what kind of defines the features. Uh, and uh, it oftentimes creates, well, I don't know, sometimes it creates delicate uh, fretwork in there and sometimes it doesn't. It just kind of depends on how you approach it. But this also seems to be a very popular style and uh, you'll find this a lot, especially in uh, portrait patterns. Uh, of people. You'll find this style an awful lot. And of course uh, here's another one that I've done. This kind of combines both the uh, deep shadow along with the line art. 
You know, notice that uh, Albert Einstein has a little bit of line art around his hair, just to kind of hint at the detail and along his face, but uh, we rely on deep shadow under his chin and his mustache and his eyes. So this is an example of combining uh, two different styles of patterns into one to uh, create a, uh, a really nice portrait. So what I suggest you do is actually kind of go through like the pattern library over at Scroll Saw Village or through the pattern archives of one of these other communities. Flip through your old back issues of your magazines or, and also just kind of flip through old, uh, old Scroll Saw books and uh, kind of look at the different styles and really pay attention to who's doing what and how they're approaching it and uh, I th you really do learn a lot by just seeing what other people are doing and naturally you'll gravitate to certain kinds of uh, pattern styles and uh, those will probably be the patterns that you like to cut. I personally prefer uh, the heavy shadowed uh, portrait patterns as you can kind of see in the Albert Einstein picture as well as the uh, Chief White Shield I believe. Yep. Uh, I really like that kind of style and those are the type of patterns I design. So if uh, if you're really drawn to the uh, the line drawings you'll probably be wanting to design some of those or if you're drawn to the silhouettes or even the pointillism uh, find out what kind of style you like and uh, that way you're creating patterns that you want to cut uh, not patterns that uh, everybody preferred you to make. Uh, always design the stuff that you want to design because you get a lot more satisfaction out of that and trust me there's a audience for everything uh, if if you uh, like uh, line art or if you like the pointillism or the silhouettes you know there's probably hundreds of people out there just like you that like to cut these type of designs so uh, go ahead and find a style that you like and really just kind of pay attention to what other people are doing Okay, so we're going to be creating scroll saw portrait patterns, and since we're going to be making patterns of people, uh, the main reference material out there is going to be photographs. Uh, there's going to be different ways of getting photographs. You're going to first of all have to get it into your computer, so you can either scan the photograph, like a physical photograph, or scan the negative, or you could use a digital camera and uh, take a picture that way and uh, make sure you bring that into the computer. Uh, so we're going to be mostly dealing with photographs um, and what what will make a good reference material for a scroll saw por portrait pattern uh, really depends on the quality of the photograph. So let's kind of talk about uh, a few of the stumbling blocks uh, that we run into as pattern designers. Um, over here I have a picture of Cher so one of the first ones that uh, we run into problems with are small photographs. Uh, little tiny photographs like this, you, you can't blow these up and make them any larger because uh, there's just not enough detail in there in order to pull information from. So I'm going to show you this as an example. I'm going to copy this image and I'm just going to paste this into, into GIMP and uh, don't worry I'm going to teach you how to do this later but uh, I'm going to enlarge this so that it would be 8 inches by 10 inches. So I'm going to enlarge that and as you can see there's hardly any information in there. Basically you took uh, very little information and blew it up and you still have very little information you're just spreading it out over a larger area. Let's zoom in. Let's kind of take a look at her face. Uh, which is usually what we end up doing portraits with. And as you can see, there's just absolutely no information there. I mean, you can't even, you, you could kind of see where her eyes might be, and you could kind of see where her mouth might be, but there is no detail there. So you're not going to be able to pull any kind of information out, out of this small little picture and make it look like something that, uh, uh, make it look like the person you intend it to be. So number one, make sure you have a large picture. Uh, I most cameras, uh, most digital cameras will make pictures that you know run anywhere between one meg to 
10 megs, you know, I think my little camera does like 1.2 megs, you know, and that's a pretty good size picture. Uh, something like this is only like maybe 8K, uh, 8 kilobytes. That's hardly anything at all, and you're not going to get any information. So basically, the larger the file size usually, re usually indicates the larger resolution. Larger resolution means more detail, and uh, more detail means that you could pull more detail out of the picture and put it into your portrait. Let's take a look at another picture. Here's a picture of Bigfoot. The good old grainy photograph. Uh, low resolution grainy photographs are very similar to the very tiny photographs like this one of Cher. Um, there's hardly any information whatsoever in there. Let's go ahead and click that. See there is hardly any information. Let's go ahead and copy this and I'm going to put it into uh, Inkscape or not Inkscape, I'm sorry. Um, whoops. Into GIMP once again. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. And we're going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit uh, and as you can see there ain't any information at in there at all. It's all grainy, it's blurred, hardly any information. I can't even I can't even pull out face, facial features out of this image so this would be a completely worthless photograph. So number two, make sure it's sharp and in focus and not grainy at all. Okay let's move on to the next one. How about low light? Here's a picture of John Goodman. Uh, this isn't horrible but it isn't great either. It's uh, low quality, uh, low light, uh, usually especially on uh, photographs uh, if you're using a um, uh, digital camera. Uh, they, don't, they don't handle real well in low light. So what they end up doing is emphasizing uh, dark areas and emphasizing high, uh, bright areas and trying to um, decide how the image is supposed to look instead of capturing the image as it is in real life. So dark images, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Uh, dark images just don't work real well. So typical snapshots, especially if they're indoors where you have to use the flash, typically don't really work very well. Uh, let's take a look at another picture of John Goodman. Here he is outside. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, we have nice even light. Uh, this is a probably be a pretty good uh, picture to pull a portrait from because the image is, uh, it, it has nice levels. Uh, there aren't anything that's overly bright. There isn't anything overly dark. Uh, it's just a nice even light across the entire photograph. So something like this would be a good way to, um, uh, to be able to pull a picture from uh, very easily. So let's go ahead and um, talk about other source material I suppose. We already talked about photographs. Let's talk about clip art. Uh, clip art could be a uh, good way to create patterns. Uh, this is from Dover clip art. Uh, as you can see some of these have already been uh, turned into black and white and with just a little bit of fiddling you could create a um, a, uh, a nice portrait style cutting. Um, so clip art can be used, but typically they don't really rely on the uh, on the shadow as much. Uh, these happen to be kind of an exception, uh, but uh, you could find clip art that might work for you as well. And uh, lastly, let's talk about printed materials, printed magazines or newspapers. Uh, those will work as well, but they're a little trickier because uh, the way they print uh, magazines. Uh, here's a, uh, a website from uh, uh, Teachers Lab, and uh, here we have a picture of the baby at 100%. But you start zooming in, and you find you start getting a lot less detail, and then you zoom in about 400%. And now you see all these crazy little dots, and if you keep zooming in, you'll see that. Printed material is made up of a series of dots. Uh, some are pink, some are blue, some are black, and it's this combination of dots 
when you step back it looks like a photograph. Now you could pull a pattern from a picture like this. It's just a little bit more tricky. Uh, typically what you'll end up doing is uh, uh, blurring, the, um, blurring the image a little bit so it kind of blurs these little dots so they kind of melt into each other a little bit and then you could kind of go back through and uh, create uh, your pattern from that. But uh, it is possible, it's just a little bit more difficult. And with that said, let's quickly talk about copyrights. Copyrights are, uh, are a very misunderstood thing. Uh, and uh, we uh, feel that if we take an image and uh, we create something totally different from it, it's completely legal. That is not the case at all. Copyrights uh, basically protect the artist. Uh, no matter what medium, uh, photographs, drawings, paintings, music, anything that's created by a person is copyrighted. They own the rights to that particular piece of work. So let's say I, um, well let's see, let's talk about Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol's uh, Marilyn Monroe picture. We all know about that one. Andy Warhol created that painting. I could go through and I could take that painting and I could turn it into a scroll saw pattern. I'm in violation of copyright because that is not my work, that is Andy Warhol's work. What I created is what would be considered derivative work. Uh, derivative work is a violation of copyright law. So I could probably create that pattern for myself and cut it specifically for myself, but I cannot sell the pattern, I cannot give away the pattern, and I certainly couldn't give away the cutting or sell the cutting because that would be violating copyright laws. And now these laws are in place to protect all artists. That includes us scroll sawers. So if you create a pattern from scratch and somebody creates a painting from it, uh, they're in violation of your intellectual property. So we got to be very, very careful about where we grab our images from. Uh, if you notice, I was using uh, Wiki Commons. Wiki Commons is a great source to find images because you could click on some of these images and what it will do is they'll tell you what the copyright information is. Uh, this one grants a rights for anybody to use this for any purpose without any conditions. So they'll tell you the, uh, any, any licensing terms associated with some of these images. Uh, so basically you could use copyright free or public domain images without asking for permission. Uh, images that belong to somebody, another artist or a photographer, you have to get written permission from. Uh, so it really is best to use stick to copyright free um, or uh, creative commons or public domain photographs and clip art or create the photographs or drawings yourself by hand without any other reference material. So let's go ahead and keep that in mind. Uh, just be very aware of copyright and uh, uh, copyright infringement is a very serious thing and uh, there's some very mean and nasty lawyers out there that is willing to pounce on anybody even a small guys so really keep an eye on that and be very careful out there okay my voice is getting a little hoarse so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up uh, next week we're gonna be dealing with um, well we're gonna actually jump into GIMP a little bit I'm going to kind of give you a tour of the major areas. I'm going to talk about some basic tools and show you how to navigate around. So stay tuned for that one. Uh, if you haven't started participating in the forums, I encourage you to do so. Swing over to scrollsawvillage.com. You'll find links to the classroom and uh, you'll find source materials and additional information. So I hope you do that and I look forward to seeing you on the forums. Until next time, happy scrolling.